Hello and welcome to GrassiMath.com where math is for everyone. Today we're going to learn how to solve equations using terms. So this is the very first rule of equations that we're going to work with. I'm going to restate something that I always bring up in these videos which is in this I'm trying to teach some strategies that will help you feel confident about doing your math problems if you're preparing for your TSI, if you're preparing for your Algebra EOC or some other standardized test this will probably be helpful for you. If you're the kind of student who really wants to go deep into the philosophy of mathematics, uh, these videos are also for you, but there are many other videos that will go a little deeper than these videos will go as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start learning how to solve using terms. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before we solve using terms is connect this to something we've already discussed. And in a previous video, we talked about this topic, moving terms in an expression. And the main rule there was you're allowed to move terms around in an expression. So here I have an expression and I went to the trouble of identifying the terms before I start pressed record. How could I make another expression using this? Well, I'm allowed to move the boxes in an expression around. So if I wanted to, I could, let's say, move. Let me draw three boxes. So I've got three terms up there and I can just move the terms around. For example, I could move this 3x term right here. It's a positive 3x, so I have to put plus 3x. Now, just as a reminder, remember that this plus sign right here was there. It's just an implied plus sign. And we've talked about that in a previous video, so if you're confused, you can make sure that you review that content first. What else could I do? Well, I could take this x squared term and I could move it to the front. So I can put x squared. And again, the same deal applies with the positive. Here it's at the back, but now it's a lead term, so therefore it gets that implied positive sign, meaning we don't have to write it, it's known that it's there. And then here I have my minus two. And I'm allowed to do this, I'm allowed to move the terms around as long as I keep the signs consistent. And just to remind you, this technically is called the commutative property. Mathematics is very old, so that's why the word commutative property sounds really old fashioned and kind of alien to us. But you don't have to remember that name. You just have to remember that you're allowed to move terms around from one expression and you can basically recreate the same expression as long as you have the same terms, the order is not important. But that's a rule that applies only to expressions. So what about equations? Is there something like that in equations? All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do in solving an equation is we're gonna look at our keyword solve. Okay, so here I have my keyword solve. And remember, remember, remember that when we see the keyword solve, we need to go all the way down to the bottom and establish our goal. It says solve for A. So that means that my goal should be A equals something. Now, as I always say in algebra, the first thing you should do with any algebra problem, any algebra problem is identify your terms. So I'm gonna go ahead and identify the terms in my first expression. And I'm going to identify the terms in my second expression. Okay, so this is expression number one. And this is expression number two. Now, if this feels uncomfortable that I'm moving this quickly, you need to go back and watch the previous videos where I explain about what is an equation. And you'll understand, oh, hey, that's expression number one and that's expression number two. Or where I explain what is a term and you'll understand better. So let's start solving this thing well it turns out look at this i see my goal and this is what's important you must use your goal 99 percent of math students don't understand the importance of setting a goal in math the reason that i say that is because many students get confused looking at an equation because they're like well what do i do next what do i do next i don't know what to do next but the goal will guide you of what to do next. You're trying to reach that goal right there. In other words, what do I mean? Well, I mean, look, let me identify these terms so you can see clearly what I'm talking about. Here I have expression number one. And here I have a bubble which represents what would possibly be expression number two. Okay, so A has to be a term all by itself and expression number two is just going to exist on the other side of the equation and then will be solved. So what I want to do is look at expression number one and say, well, I just want to have A. Well, what do I have here? I have here, and you can see that this has an implied positive, right? I have here positive A. So I can keep that inside expression number one. 
Well, which one is making it not match my goal? Well, clearly it's this eight right here. This eight right here, I wish it wasn't in expression number one. So where can I put things that I don't want to be in expression number one? Well, I'm gonna just move it over to expression number two. Now, unlike when we're working inside the same expression, we're now working with the equation because we're moving it from expression one to expression two. So we're crossing the equal sign. And because we're crossing the equal sign, there's just one special rule. You can see that this is clearly a positive eight. When I move it to the other expression, it becomes a negative eight. Now, some people like to ask, well, why did that happen? Why did you change it from a positive to a negative? And the reason that happens is because an, an equation is like a balance. So as one side would be positive, the other side, it would be negative. Okay, or you can think of it like a mirror. In the mirror, if you move your right hand, the person in the mirror is actually moving their left hand. Okay, so now you can kind of see why we have to change it because these two expressions are mirroring one another across the equal sign. Okay, so that moved my eight term and therefore I can kind of cross it off. It's gone from expression number one. It's now here in expression number two. Okay, so now I can rewrite on this side, I have an A term, and on this side, I have 7 minus 8. 7 minus 8. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit longer than I normally would, just because you're learning this for the first time, or at least I think you are. 7 minus 8. So I'm going to go ahead and identify my terms. Now, one key thing is, well, look, this side looks great. But I have one thing that we always have to do in mathematics. We always have to look for opportunities to simplify. And if you remember in the previous uh, video, I said expressions can be simplified. Well, this one cannot be simplified any further. Expression number one is already simplified. It's just an A. Okay, so we're going to keep the A. But expression number two can be simplified because there's some basic arithmetic that we can do here. Seven minus eight. Well, we can combine those terms, and we talked about that in another video where we talked about how to add and subtract in algebra. But honestly, you don't really even need to know about that. You just need to know that, well, 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So you're allowed to simplify this because these are both constant terms. So you're just going to combine them by doing 7 minus 8. You're going to do that little arithmetic problem right here. And that's going to simplify expression number 2. So basically, what am I looking at now? Well, I've simplified expression number one. I've simplified expression number two. So therefore, has my goal been reached? Yes, yes. So I don't have to worry about, oh, well, this is mystery terms down here. My final output is going to be that A equals negative one. And that'll be my final, final answer. So just remember, I like to think of it this way because I notice that many students are okay with the moving step, but they get confused on the simplifying step. Like, well, what's happening here? Because I already have A equals something. And this is something we've talked about before. You could think of this one as kind of your draft. You've used your laws of algebra, and then you're going to simplify. And this one here, when after you simplify, you could kind of think of that as your final copy. So relating it to kind of like an English class, let's say, a draft is just something that you see and work with, right? And the final copy is what you submit as your, oh, this is my final answer, okay? So this little step right here is just an improvement step where you're saying, oh, well, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to make sure that everything is perfectly acceptable to the math community. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify expression number two by doing seven minus eight to get negative one. And now we're very happy right there because we've simplified. Again, this one's mathematically correct, but this one's the one that you would submit or see on an exam or submit to a teacher. Or if you were a mathematician, that's the one that you would think was the acceptable response. So here we have a second example problem, which we're now going to do a little bit faster than we did that first example problem. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is see my keyword solve. And when I see that keyword solve, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my equation and I'm just going to say, OK, I'm solving for R. So I better set it up so that it's R equals something. And I can even look at my terms to make sure, OK, R is what's supposed to be an expression one. 
And then the something is whatever junk I have to get rid of from expression number one. And this something over here might be one term, might be a few terms to simplify, could be anything. But that side is going to be expression number two. I'm going to go ahead and identify my terms. And now this is the part. This is the part where you should be asking yourself, what do I do next? And you should be happy now instead of confused. So you should be kind of happy now, like, yay, okay? Because you know what to do next. Because the goal is guiding you. The goal is guiding you. Look, which piece am I going to keep in expression number one? Let's label these. Expression number one and expression number two. Which part am I going to keep in expression number one? Well, I need an R and I have an R. So in expression number one, I need to keep the R. So that means what do I need to get rid of? Well, I need to get rid of the negative eight term. So I can move this whole term across the equal sign and we'll get that expression two out of the way. Put that up here. And when I move that term across the equal sign, guess what? It's going to come over here as another term. But is it going to be negative 8 now? No, it's going to be positive 8, positive 8. So in this, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the negative 8. And basically what we're going to have now is what we recopy. What comes down in expression number 1 is R. And remember that now the R is the lead term, so it no longer needs that plus sign because the plus sign becomes an implied plus sign. And then here we have 18 plus 8. Okay, and again, probably after a while, you're going to start simplifying little things like this in your head. But for right now, while we're learning, let's write it out. Now I'm looking at expression number one, and guess what? It's a good match to my goal. So I know that what I did was right. Now I'm looking at expression number two. Okay, so now what I need to do is think, well, now I have a draft. What improvements can I make on the way from my draft to my final, final copy. Well, this side is already simplified, so we'll just copy the R equals. So that term is good. What do I get with this expression right here, 18 plus 8? Well, these are both constant terms, so in algebra we're allowed to combine constant terms. And so 18 plus 8 is 26. So this is expression number 2. Now again, these are very, very basic guys, and we're gonna talk more about these rules as we go. So let's just summarize what we've learned before we get out of here. So at this moment right now, you've learned the first rule of equality. Uh, this is called the additive property, by the way, additive property. But as I always say, these words are very old because math is very old. And it's not so much important that you know that this word is, that this is called the additive property of equality. What's important is that you know that you can move terms over to the other side of the equal sign. I hope that you learned something today. And of course, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. And to visit the website where math is for everyone, www.grossimath.com. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.